definitely noticeable difference in them. But aims to also say that she feels it's rare for her to say she can you person. <laughs> That's great. I'm glad you feel better. And Connor offered some great breathing exercises and other exercises for me to do. I've already noticed a big difference in my training, sleep and recovery. So yeah, couldn't recommend Connor enough. Thank you. Amy is an elite CrossFitter and she was dealing with some issues that I think will really resonate with those of you who commonly and frequently lift weights and like to lift heavy. She was dealing with some pretty significant right shoulder stiffness and also low back tightness. And as a CrossFitter, she is the ultimate representation of what happens when a body gets stuck in a pattern that's representative of someone that's producing a lot of force all the time. And that pattern is extension. Now extension is such an important part of how we produce force. It's awesome, we love it. But if we get stuck in an extension pattern, as many athletes do, and we lack the variability to move into other postures, this can create a lot of issues down the line as we add years of repetitive stress on certain tissues and joints. CrossFit has so many different demands on one's body. It drives a lot of extension, but in a lot of different ways. So Amy was presenting with someone that had an inability to access flexion in some areas of her body, but also she had a lack of ability to create meaningful rotation. The more extended someone is, the more limited their genuine rotation capabilities are. The more extended someone is, the less they're gonna be able to effectively rotate from side to side, the more they're gonna probably rotate at segments we don't want a ton at, which is the low back or lumbar spine. When I assessed Amy, she had a very significant limitation in shoulder internal rotation. Shoulder internal rotation is very important for us to be able to move our shoulders through a full range of motion without compensatory movement. Shoulder internal rotation is a representation of how tight someone's rib cage is on the front side or how restricted it is. Normally when we breathe in, we should be able to get some expansion on the front side of the rib cage. But if we're stuck in this position where our ribs are depressed like this, then that is going to limit our ability to get that expansion and allow our shoulder to internally rotate. Shoulder internal rotation is a representation of two main things. The first is how neutral is the rib cage. The more neutral the rib cage, the better the resting position of the shoulder, the better you're gonna be able to access that internal rotation. But if you're stuck in an extension pattern, then you're gonna be tipped back and it's gonna be hard for you to internally rotate that shoulder. It's also a representation of how much expansion you can get on the front side of the rib cage. If you are in an extension pattern, you're going to be biasing a lot of expansion at these lowest ribs right here. Down here, what we call the bucket handle ribs. And this over time limits. And if we're only expanding this area because this is where we're stuck, then we're not gonna get much expansion up here. And that's going to feed this extension pattern because 20,000 times a day, we're taking breaths in, only expanding this area, not expanding our back or our upper chest. And that can be problematic and restrict our shoulder's ability to access internal rotation. Also assessed her shoulder abduction, which is a representation of how easily she can turn one side relative to the other. So if I was turned to the right side, my shoulder abduction would be better on this side, relatively more limited on my left side. So for her, that was the case. Her shoulder abduction on the right was noticeably better than her shoulder abduction on the left, which indicated to me that she was turned to the right side, but also extended. So that was what was going on within her rib cage. Now, this also plays into her pelvis. When I measured her pelvis rotation or her ability to rotate her hips from side to side, it was very clear that she had a harder time going to the left than the right, which tells me her pelvis was also turned to the right side. So she has an upper body turned right, a lower body turned right, but also extension on top of that. And that is going to create a lot of wear and tear on that right shoulder and also her low back because it's kind of torqued over to one side and that right shoulder is taking a beating because she's constantly loading it. The other slight red flag I saw was that her straight leg raise was huge. It was upwards of 130 degrees when in reality, I don't want them going beyond much more than about 90 to 100 max. Now, if you have a straight leg raise that is so large like that, it's representative of someone that has very, very poor control over the backside of their pelvis and the ability to manage that pelvic tilt. So she 
was stuck so far forward on both sides that this had created an eccentric or elongated strategy over time and she lacked the ability to get this pelvis underneath her. So we needed to first get her out of this constant state of extension. And the way we did that was, as I do with a lot of people, I put her in a 90-90 position with an emphasis of getting expansion on those front ribs because that's where she was limited within her rib cage too. So I had her breathe in that position and really focus on the hamstrings, bringing the pelvis underneath her. And after doing that, the hamstrings had better control over the tilt of her pelvis. They were in a better natural resting position. So her straight leg raise actually got worse, which is exactly what I wanted. That represents the hamstrings now have some tension on them, which is good but she still has a nice healthy straight leg raise. So we got her out of extension, but she still turned to the right. So we needed to get her to go back to the left and open up this right chest wall in particular, because remember that shoulder internal and rotation limitation is a representation of them not being able to open that right chest wall. So a really good way you can do that is with a side plank. We did a left side plank and we had her just hold that with an arm overhead to give her more expansion on those right ribs. And that was really helpful for her improving that internal rotation of the shoulder. The last thing we did was we gave her a glute max tech. The last thing we did is we gave her a better ability to turn her pelvis to the left side. And this is key. I just don't feel responsible ever giving someone just shoulder exercises or just hip exercises. If your hips are asymmetrical, your shoulders are asymmetrical. They're feeding each other. This, these asymmetries are a total body compensatory pattern. You can't isolate one from the other. So if I gave her just the stuff I did before where it was so if I only gave her that side plank, she would not see long-term progress because her hips would be influencing and driving her into her right side and the shoulder would also be driven to the right side. So we could try to get her to go left, but if her hips can't go left too, she'll always be limited. So we needed to give her an ability to push from right to left. And that's what this glute max technique was doing. We're having her create an association with her foot arch working and also her glute max working to push her out of her right side into her left. And I gave her an overhead reach on that side to further facilitate the opening of the rib cage on that side as well. Do you feel that? So much easier. So much easier, good. That's, yeah. that's definitely more, yeah. And as you can see from the testimonial, Amy is moving and feeling a lot better. It was a pleasure to work with her. And if you want to see more case studies like this, I have a playlist on my YouTube channel that you can check out.